Hey all my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. The day we've long been waiting for is finally here. The 2025 Toyota 4Runner has finally been revealed. All new from the ground up. So we're gonna have a good look at it inside and out and then, well, I'm gonna tell you what I really think. The wait is finally over. The 2025 Toyota 4Runner has finally been uncovered and made public for all to see. It's not like it was a secret though. Toyota's been teasing us with it for some time and to be honest, they're pretty predictable as a company. So the new 4Runner brings really no surprises other than it's all new. Styling obviously plays the Tacoma card in its overall flavor and detail, but has more muscular forms that are aggressive, bold, and, well, let's just be honest, overtly masculine. It's not exactly the same, however, but continues the traditions which have made it popular, like its roll-down rear window for your dog to hang out of, and a more truck-like vibe than the sea of mom jeans crossovers that have permeated our world. Based on the same TNGAF body on frame bones as the Toyota Tacoma, Land Cruiser, and the larger Tundra and Sequoia, it's grown in size just slightly. Wheelbase is 2.4 inches longer now at 112.2 inches. Length increases by 4.7 inches to 194.9 and it gets exactly 2 inches wider. So, it's bigger overall. Those dimensions in fact make it exactly the same size as the new Land Cruiser. So what is the difference between the two besides styling and price? Mechanically speaking, it's virtually identical with the exception that it has a solid axle rear suspension with 5-link setup from the Tacoma, where the Land Cruiser has a fully independent setup. A dizzying array of nine, count them, nine trim grades will be available for 2025, starting with the SR5, and then the TRD Sport, TRD Sport Premium, TRD Off-Road, TRD Off-Road Premium, Limited, Platinum, TRD Pro, and Trail Hunter. That's a lot! Powering the 2025 4Runner are the same exact powertrains that come in the new Tacoma, including a standard 2.4 liter turbocharged 4 with 278 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. It comes mated to a new 8-speed automatic transmission. The engine is standard on SR5, TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road, and Limited. Available in either two-wheel drive or part-time four-wheel drive, this represents a huge step up from the old 4-liter V6 and 5-speed auto, not so much in horsepower, but torque and increased gears that allow more opportunities for that engine to be in its power curve sweet spot. Then, of course, there's the optional hybridized variant, which adds a 48-horsepower electric motor between the engine and the 8-speed transmission along with a 1.87 kilowatt hour nickel metal hydride battery pack. This bumps power to 326 ponies and the highest ever 465 pound feet of torque. It's optional on the TRD Off-Road and Limited, but standard on the TRD Pro, Trail Hunter, and Platinum. Both new powertrains, along with a significantly upgraded full box ladder frame, brings towing capacity up to 6,000 pounds. As mentioned, 4Runner comes standard with two-wheel drive and lower trims with an automatic limited slip differential. 4Runners with the part-time four-wheel drive have an electronically controlled two-speed transfer case with high-low range and the brake and software actuated Active Traction Control, or A-Track, in addition to the automatic limited slip differential. For those stepping up to the top off-road, TRD Off-Road, TRD Pro, and Trail Hunter grades, there's a driver-controllable electronic locking rear differential. A more luxury-oriented full-time four-wheel drive system with center locking differential is available on Limited and standard on Platinum. So like before, a lot of different systems depending on your trim grade. A number of new goodies for the off-roader are available too. A new available stabilizer bar disconnect allows for better articulation in the deep crazy. The multi-terrain select system now works in both four-wheel drive high and four-wheel drive low as well. For anyone that's actually experienced the noisy jittery crawl control of the previous generation, they've actually made that quieter for the new model. 
Top metrics available are 9.2 inches of ground clearance, a 32 degree approach, and 24 degree departure angle. While most of the trim grades are familiar, if you've been into Forerunners before, the Trail Hunter and the Platinum are all new. Like the Trail Hunter for the Tacoma, this trim grade offers up a more sophisticated overlanding theme with hardware tailored to that buyer. You get cool bits like ARB Old Man Emu 2.5 inch dampers, high mount air intake, and ARB roof rack. These along with 33-inch Toyo Open Country all-terrain tires add 2 inches of lift at the front and 1.5 inches at the rear. There's a lot more doodads added into the mix too, but these are the highlights. We have another video on the Trail Hunter specifically to go over all of that jazz. Platinum on the other hand takes Limited way up and farther into the luxury sense with elevated interior trims, features, and technology along with a number of stylistic trim treatments throughout that give it a flavor all its own. And that gets us to the interior which looks kind of familiar if you've seen the inside of the new Tacoma. It's set up to offer all of the digital displays that we've been seeing across the board in today's market as well as the newest connected technologies. Some of those, of course, are now going to be subscription based. What hasn't changed is the rugged versatility that the Forerunner is expected to offer up. The second row seats still get out of the way and there's still a third row seating option though. It's still not the roomiest. It can be there if you want it, but don't expect it to be comfortable for long trips. The 2025 Forerunner will arrive stateside in the fall of 2024 with pricing to be announced along with other specs you didn't hear from me today closer to that time. The word stateside I just mentioned does though indicate that the Forerunner will continue to be built in Japan which will be music to many of the diehard enthusiasts ears. I have to admit I am pretty excited about this like all of you. I've been waiting quite a time to see what this thing's going to look like and no big shocker it looks like the Tacoma made into an SUV although it it does have proportions that to me are just a little bit more muscular and that is a good thing that's what it needs to be this needs muscles it needs cred to continue to compete with a lot of the new competition out there the Bronco and of course the Jeep Wrangler. I think now it is positioned even better with all of the new trim grades and some of what it offers, the power, the mechanicals, especially that disconnecting sway bar. Those are things that are all going to make it compete even a little bit better with those other vehicles. Though Toyota enthusiasts would tell you that it, it doesn't need all of that. It's got quality where the other two, well, they might not. Anyway, I look forward to a test drive. I can't wait. I'll probably have two or three because they always tend to give us different trim grades to try out. And we do have a video specifically for the Trail Hunter right there that really gets into the nuts and bolts of what it offers. You can see that there. You can also subscribe to your YouTube channel right there. Either way, stay tuned.